Metallus Resources is a junior exploration company with a 100% owned property in the heart of the Golden Triangle, northern British Columbia. Their Kirkham property is located 20 kilometers west of the world famous KSM deposits being developed by Seabridge. It also lies within close proximity to the SK Creek Mine and Newcrest Mining's Bruce Track Gold Mine. This week I got to sit with Metallus' chief geologist, Nicholas Dudek, as well as CEO Fiori Aliperti to discuss the company's latest news release and sit through a GIS demonstration of the newly dis released 3D model of the Cliff Miles target. Mr. Aliperti provided a pre-season pre update on some of the initial plans for the upcoming program. At times the video is technical in nature, but I encourage you to sit through as the video cements and demonstrates the true scale and opportunity we have with this company. Hi everybody. Today I have Nick, who's the chief geologist, and Fiore, who's the CEO of Metallus Resources. Recently, the company put out an exciting news release containing a 3D geological model, which demonstrates that the cliff porphyry system is massive in scale, and it also helps to provide an understanding of the mineralization, and also importantly guiding where we might want to put some holes in the upcoming season. So Nick, we'll get you started here. Uh, I know you have a 3D model that you wanted to show with us, so we'll get right into it. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, basically, we just have the full claim map for uh, the Kirkham property. I'm just going to zoom in down here just to help give everyone a sense of where we are. North is up on, the, on my screen. And as we zoom in here on uh, Cliff and Miles, I've added these labels here just so people recognize it from past news releases where we've had these blocks labeled. I'm going to turn off the surface because it's going to be in the way. And I'm going to turn off the claim boundary because it's not particularly relevant at this scale. So here we got a plan view, north still up, of our drilling within this, within the cliff miles zone. Um, the color and scale, just to just to help people understand what we're looking at, the color and, and the width of the drill trace is going downhole is a function of its gold equivalent um, grade. And in this case, they're composites. It's sort of a running composite, which just helped kind of smooth things over a little bit. It doesn't change uh, the fundamental amount of metal in the ground. It just makes things a little bit easier to digest. It gets rid of some of the high spikes and lows and okay. makes things a little easier to see. Um, <clears throat> hey, Nick, so just yeah. before we continue, just to give the people a sense of scale, how how long or uh, how wide is this mineralization that we're looking at right now from north to south? Well, actually, we're not looking at mineralization, are we, Nick? We're looking at the faults. Nick will go into... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that came up from the last news release is um, <coughs> some of our drill holes. Actually, I'm going to just pull up that figure right now because I have this ready, particularly in this figure here. Some of the drill holes exit through the atom fault, which is this blue shape displayed here. Um, you know, it's, it's depicted here as being mostly two-dimensional, uh, just a series of planes. Uh, you can see that it's, it's cut up a little bit, and I'll address that shortly, but you can see some of these drill holes that do appear to have drilled out the bottom of it in this figure. That's not exactly what's happening here, is that they're actually drilling through the atom fault into the footwall, uh, which isn't mineralized. Um, so if I turn around so that we're looking slightly to the northeast, east is in this direction, north is in that direction. When I turn, you can sort of see the cardinal directions and surrounding this cube thing. Um, you can see of all of our drill holes that have punctured through the atom vault into the other side. Um, it's, it, although maybe not the greatest for mineralization, it's actually a great tool for drilling because we know once we hit the atom fault, it's easy to recognize that the geology on the other side is completely different from the geology above. Um, makes the great spatial datum, so we know exactly where we are and when to stop a hole. Um, so going forward, we don't have to drill long traces into the foot wall anymore. We can stop a little shorter. Um, sometimes we get some gold enriched assays. You can see these little red blips that pop up every now and then on the other side or a little pink one there. Uh, but generally speaking, it's, it's unmineralized. So it'll help us save, uh, save money and put more money towards actual drill meterages. Uh, so that was one thing we wanted to talk about. So these traces that appear barren, it's just because we're looking at it from this angle and it's drilled through to the other side of the atom fault. 
the problem is with this system is there's a lot of there's a lot of geometry to take into account. Um, it's kind of hard finding a perfect view of everything. Um, <clears throat> so I mentioned that the uh, the atom fault, this large scale blue thing, this thing I've colored blue, is sort of broken up, and there's a bunch of faults we've inferred and and seen at surface or mapped out or drilled, which are these gray and uh, blue planes, respectively. The blue ones are ones we're still trying to figure out. We don't have good control on them, but they're sort of inferred. Uh, the gray ones we see at them at surface. We see them in the drill in the drill holes. A um, bit more well understood. And the gray ones are really the ones responsible for breaking up cliff block one to block three and the miles block. Um, this is a bit much to look at, so I'm not going to have those displayed. But just like to keep in mind when we're looking at continuity. Um, <clears throat> So now I'm going to pull up the main thing we care about uh, from this last news release is the grade bearing MP, which is this. I'll go back into a plan view, uh, navigate, look north, look down. So we're back in plan view here, <clears throat> and this is the main, the the main uh, porphyry phase that we're interested in from the last news release. So okay, now relating to your <laughs> relating to your question here, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I have to set this plane up. For measuring. If I take the ruler tool, we could trace this thing from in drill holes. It might go be, it looks like it goes beyond because we have uh, chip sampling at surface down in this area here, but we could trace this thing all the way from the south end of cliff, all the way to the north end where it's still open. Um, so it's open both to the north and to the south. Oops. And that comes to 2.5 kilometers. Uh, okay. This orientation. Yeah. So, so this is the mineralized, the main mineralized body of interest. Yeah, and that I mean to our listeners, you know, that's a, a massive scale. I was looking at the news release, <laughs> two and a half kilometers long. It looks like it's uh, a couple hundred meters uh, wide, and uh, you know, like six hundred up to six hundred meters deep. And then if we do some basic napkin math, I'm I'm thinking that's already like you know half a billion tons, just napkin math, not something that you know, just, you know, multiplying some numbers with some standard gravity that we think might, might be there. So just, you know, it's a, it's a massive scale product, uh, project. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of, um, you know, we compare to a couple of different projects, this, you know, um, GT Newmont, the Newmont deposit here, Saddle North. Um, <clears throat> we've compared now to this one a couple of times, and this is to scale. Um, people get excited about the great depth potential of a lot of these systems, which, as far as we could tell, we still have here, but we'll we'll look at that a little bit closer later. Um, we still have the depth potential in this area down here, but what a lot of people might be forgetting is just how long this thing is from north to south, which is exactly as you say, from north to south, which is something a lot of other major deposits in the Golden Triangle or even around the world don't necessarily have. You got to go quite deep and get into the the world of caving and and underground mining, etc. Whereas most of our stuff that we've hit. Some of our best grades, like down here in the cliff block one, they're right at surface. Um, so next thing I want to uh, hop in. So I'm I'm panning now. So we're looking a little bit sort of at an angle towards it. This this plane here, this square, is uh, sort of marking horizontal. Um, so we're looking now kind of to the northwest. I'm going to leave this system on, and I'm going to toggle on a couple other things that are of interest. So in this last news release, we talk about splitting the MP into two parts. We have the well mineralized MP, which is the dark red. And now this sort of, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, I have a bit of a cough. Um, this pinky color, which is the other, the other half of the MP, which has sort of confused things in the past because textually they're very similar, but they have pretty different grade profiles and um, veining content. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm just going to toggle through a couple of these. I'll leave that on. We can similarly we can split the CP, the coarse porphyry, which we've mentioned in the past, into two parts. We have the CP, and actually a half decently mineralized CP, which sort of rides here and there in the yellow. So I look back to plan view ish. Um, you can see it sort of weaves its way through the system, and then we have the other coarse porphyry, which we've drilled a fair amount and it runs sort of the length of the entire atom fault. Very well constrained, it's very well behaved. Um, 
it does it doesn't have the greatest mineralization, but its geometry is really informative for for everything else. And then the last one, all volumetrically very small. If I pan or tilt the view back, so we're looking sort of due northwest, um, is the FP, the feldspar porphyry, which weaves through it. I'm going to turn a couple of things off. It's hard to see the feldspar porphyry, which is is decently mineralized, but it's um, generally very thin. Uh, and this one was actually from last season, one of the key players, if you will, for uh, telling us more about the uh, sill-like geometry. Um, as you can see, though, it's, it doesn't really contribute too, too much to the, uh, the volume. Um, with regard to the, that geometry, uh, I'll turn back on the well-mineralized MP. You could see if I hop, uh, I'll just rotate us back to a plan view. We often refer to it in the past, we've used terms like feeder or dike or trunk, um, as it appears like a trunk in cross section. Uh, we're talking about this sort of tabular form that runs here. It offsets forward to this, offsets back, and sort of runs and offsets based on those faults all the way from the far south end all the way to the north. The second geometric part is the are the sills or sill like geometry. So if I pan, so we're looking sort of to the north, actually, I'll actually look more to the west. So now we have a very similar view to this figure. Uh, you can lump, you can simplify all this as one sill and all of this stuff up here as one sill, which I've done. So I'll just turn those on. So this is sort of the simplified sill geometry. I've just put them all in one large envelope and down there as well. And I've also similarly simplified the um, the dike feeder zone, and I'll turn off the original. So when, if we're looking to the west, you could see this long sill-like thing. And obviously, this is, as I said, this is simplified. So there's holes, it pinches and swells and it breaks. Same with this one down below. This is the one we drilled in hole 42. That's these. So you can see the bottom one, this large form is this. So this thing is, is coming, in the, in the current view, it's plunging or dipping towards us, shallowly towards us, as is the more shallow one, which is this thing, sort of running the whole way along. Uh, in this case, you know, in this case, you could see they're still somewhat open. We could probably extend this one a, a few hundred, maybe a couple, a couple, 300, 400 meters to the north. Similarly, it might continue in the, the south block. We just don't have drilling in the specific areas required for that. And the more shallow sill also probably continues uh, a little bit further to the north and maybe to the south, depending on results um, or future results. Okay, so see. basically hmm. you're, you're showing us here the high priority targets on the right side. <laughs> and this is where you think you're gonna find more MP uh, mineralization, well mineralized, um, uh, mineral uh, well MP well mineralized, higher grade material. So that's why those are the high priority uh, targets for this season, right? Yeah. So yeah, you know, this this large uh, this large hatching patch here specifically is looking at this volume of the bottom sill here, for example. This patch up here of hatching is looking at this this uh, volume here and trying to extend this tabular shape further to the north. Uh, similarly, this is related to extending this further to the north and exploring this second uh, MP tabular shape. <coughs> Actually, I'll just go through all of them. This one's on the other side of a sort of a, a, a the second MP phase we discuss uh, and how we have sampled it at surface. So it likely continues on the other side. Similarly, this thing, which is probably, well, maybe our most interesting, this paired with this, our most interesting uh, high priority targets is talking about this form here. So again, there's a lot of depth going on, um, similar to the atom fault. You know, if I zoom in on cliff block one, which is just something we should should do at this point, I think, um, you can see a lot of these holes started. Oh, the whole label's turned off. Um, a lot of these holes started within the uh, the high grade MP. You know, and this is these are areas where we have you know 0.8 over uh, 100 meters or, or 0.96 over 82, um, 0.7s over 120 or something. I can't remember the exact yeah. numbers. And, and you, but, there looks like there's a couple hundred meters in between that, that hasn't been drilled out yet. So you might be able to get that kind of grade in between those uh, those those drill holes, right? Um, so oh, it looks yeah, like you've, you've definitely modeled 
and that's why it's a high priority on uh, you know from this new model we, we can see where you might want to go this season to hit some more of the you know the 0 0.8 0 0.9 gram yeah, over 100 plus 200 or, or even more so that, that's great to see yeah so i'll pull up this section while we're talking about it um <clears throat> this is a, a section from our first news release this year and, and this is sort of a the, the background of what the 3D model looks like. So this large, you know, we label it here is the feeder zone. That's this tabular shape. We've, we've sliced it now. You know, there's the section line. We've sliced it basically right down this. You can see these holes, you know, 0.96 over 82, 0.7 over 140. Um, you know, these holes haven't been undercut. This thing is still open to depth. And because we have a, a decent understanding of geometry in the other porphyry phases and how similar those porphyry phases are to one another, geometrically speaking, we're inferring that this thing travels to depth. I mean, it came from somewhere, it goes somewhere. Um, in all other cases to the north, it's it continues to depth until it hits uh, the atom fault. And in the case of this first block, which is yet another bonus of going back down here, is if uh, I pan around, sorry, um, moving things around could be a little confusing when you're not doing it, but. Uh, and we look at these drill traces, how they all poke out. If you look at the orientation of the atom fault, actually maybe it's probably a little bit best if I spin it around. Oh, you can sort of see it here. If we're looking to the, to the southeast-ish, we're looking at the backside of the atom fault. So in this figure, we're looking from this direction, like as if we're in the legend. You can see there's a bit of a curve to it, which it's, it's a curve of planar fault. Uh, <clears throat> the curve is more pronounced in the blocks to the north than it is to the south. We have a couple points of constraint and other drill holes that didn't cross the atom fault all contribute to understanding its shape. Fundamentally, on, in block one, it appears to be steeper. It doesn't have as pronounced of a curve. You can see it here. Uh, if we take that same sort of curve profile, if you will, and apply it to this, it, it doesn't look to be curving within, well, you can see it's starting to curve, but it doesn't curve significantly as to cut off our system within the, the upper 800 something meters. Perhaps. Yeah. So, I mean, so that, obviously that's, we have a drill there, but yeah. So th that's great that we have an initial <clears throat> idea that hey, the mineralization here could go very deep, right? Kind of like, uh, and and that's because I, we don't expect the atom fault to be cutting the mineralization off here, based on the the historical the, the holes that you've already drilled. Yeah, exactly. So this is a great place. Yeah, it's wide it's open got, here. Yeah, it's wide open. It's it's ready for systematic undercuts and step outs. Uh, the atom fault is is steeper here. Uh, and the best grades from the entire the entire cliff miles are right here. These, you know, the 0.96 over 82. It's it's unmatched for the section, and it's right at surface. It's an easy place to put short holes and get you know the maximum possible return. Um, and hopefully, carry it. We'll just keep on marching to the north with it, with you know systematic step outs and undercuts to keep following yep. it. That, that's that's really exciting yeah so now, now i understand you know on, on that other figure that you had yeah, why this yeah the, now this makes an entirely perfect sense why your high priority target on the left side goes all the way down very deep and that's because the atom fault is not curved and that's why it's uh you know we think it's completely open there and like you said it's great because this is where we, you or metallus have seen the highest grades so far so that this is really really exciting yeah, hey, I'm glad I'm explaining this well. <laughs> um, I guess on, oops, sorry, didn't mean to move that down. On the 3D side, <clears throat> the only other thing to note, and I'll turn this off because this is a fairly complex shape, is our gold enriched zones. So this is a late event that sort of has kind of ripped through the whole porphyry system and has in place uh, intervals that are uh, more enriched in gold than the typical porphyry grades we see. And that's going to be, this is a bit of a complex shape, but I'll guide you guys through it. I'll go back to plan view because that's, you know, we're looking straight down on it. We described this thing a little bit, but it's a, it's again, it's a complex shape. Uh, it has a, a, similar to the porphyry, uh, the porphyry system, it has a feeder, this long ribbon like thing that runs all the way from the south end all the way to the north. And it's popping in and adding in these sort of almost spurious, like high grade gold hits, like on over here, over here. Oftentimes we see them in the foot wall of the atom fault, just right close to it. And occasionally we see it 
um, we believe there's some horizontal or sub vertical, sorry, sub vertical on the uh, the faults, the um, the left, the apparent left lateral faults that I showed earlier. So if I pan this, so now we're going to go back to looking at a similar orientation to this. Maybe that's a good place to stop right right here. That's the long ribbon. It it crosses the atom fault into you know we don't know how, how we don't know how deep it goes, and it comes right to surface from what we can tell. This large uh, you know, leapfrog style blowout over here. That's related to the, the high grades of the epithermal system up here. Um, <clears throat> these these fin-like things are uh, falling along those uh, left apparent left lateral faults that I showed at the beginning. And then on top of that, we have sort of a strata bound mineralization. So if I look due west, you can see there's one, and there's a second one here. And the cool thing, ah, okay, so this is a pretty complicated shape. Uh, obviously, you know, it's 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 a late gold event. It's not volumetric as volumetric as a porphyry system. But the cool thing about it, and I'm going to turn on the MP, the well mineralized MP, the simplified version, just the just the dike. I'll leave the sills off. Uh, if we will go back to looking down on it, it kind of weaves around the uh, the MP, the well mineralized MP. So. Ideally, in this coming this coming drill program, we'll be able to hit uh, the, our you know our main porphyry phase of interest, as well as you know the epithermal or the gold enriched zones from south to north with with every drill hole. We would hope, um, but of course, it's a bit harder to recognize in core, uh, funnily enough. So we'll see how it evolves with time. Okay, and, and sorry, can if yeah. you can. Remind me on the epi uh, epithermal uh, gold zone. Are those higher grades than the the porphyry mineralization? They're generally higher gold grades. Yeah, lower copper grades because it's 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 just a gold enriched a gold enrichment event. Um, higher gold grades than you would expect from just pure copper or just pure porphyry grades alone. Um, and they come okay. up as yeah, spurious like hits. We've had them tracked out before. Obviously, this is everything in 3D I've shown. It's more simplified than what we can do in a cross section. But uh, that's sort of these yellow traces we've shown before in them. Um, okay. In previous so, so that's great. We're, we're going after the bulk tonnage, uh, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 gram at the southern end. And yep. we have this epi epithermal uh, gold zone, which we understand now as well. And we're, we're expecting to hit both of them, you know, maybe two birds in one stone to really kind of expand and uh, build this system. And also, I think in your news release, really increase the overall grades that you drill this year versus what we've seen uh, maybe in the past year or two. Yeah, that's that's the hope. And I think we're in a good good position to do that. I don't think, I think 3D wise, that was sort of... Uh... The ball. I think that was everything I had hoped to show. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's great. I think that's a, a great explanation. It, it certainly helped my understanding. Um, so I, the, the only thing I wanted to say, Andrew, sorry, is that uh, Nicholas, if you wanted to explain under hole forty one and forty two, uh, you you did you did touch on that. That that's another zone that's that you want to explore. Oh yeah, uh, I mean absolutely. I'll, I'll pull this back on. You know, this is this is definitely an area we want to highlight for sure. You know, the south block of cliff, but similarly with these other hatched zones. You know, I was, I like the gray. I like this stuff we saw in hole forty two. That's this one here. Uh, yep. We came into a system that was well veined. It had uh, had decent uh, copper gold, um, and as far as we could tell, because <clears throat> now we're in one of these uh, sill like geometries, that it's it's open to the east. You know, um, I have it extended. You know, I've made this model, but I don't. I don't want to extend it off to infinity. Obviously, it would make for a weird visual. But uh, you yeah, know, we don't know how far this thing goes. That's this hatching area here. Uh, okay. It's open to the east, as far as we can tell. Similarly, with the the shallow sill as well. And up here, well, there's not a lot of drilling up here. And as far as it looks, it looks like the system, the shape, is still open in that direction. So these are other areas that would be great to be able to hit onto. Okay, great. Yeah. So similarly on, on the north side at Miles, you, you do that. Uh, there's not much drilling there. So there's also a lot of upside potential there as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. I think you covered all, you know, all my questions on, on that side. So 
uh, with that, thank, thanks for showing this, this model. It was great for my understanding, and I hope it's helped other folks as well that are listening. Uh, so now I want to shift focus to, to Fiore to give us an idea of what we should expect in the, you know, this upcoming season and, and what the plans are. Well, with, uh, with the temperature still holding out, uh, we're, we're hoping to be out there in July. Um, but uh, it, may, may, it may be a, a middle July start. We'll see. Um, we like to do a, a two-phase uh, program, um, the, the first phase starting in mid-July, uh, going aggressive in the, the cliff zone. Um, uh, on the next news release, uh, uh, Nicholas and, and, and Dave will have a better idea of actual you know, drills, uh, drill tracing and, and where, where we're going to you know, uh, hit the, the good grades and, and everything that he talked about today, we'll, we'll put that out in the next news release. Um, so the phase one will be to attack uh, the cliff zone. Uh, if, what we feel is that if we can show the grades are there and we can show the size and the depth and the width, I, I think then you know you can follow that up, uh, you know, with uh, also the mile zone. So that would be our first interest. Uh, we will be doing some core analysis and and some other work in the field. Uh, well, we, you know, get the pads and, and, and the drill in and everything ready for the season. So we're, we're looking at, yeah, a, a two phase. We want to, you know, make sure that uh, uh, we, we, we know what we're going to be doing on the second phase. Um, I, I think uh, anything else that we can add in there, uh, Nicholas, on, on the... Um, I think you summarized it well. I mean, we've talked about other targets. In our in our past news releases, um, yeah. Metallus certainly has you know like in the Z10 releases specifically, and Metallus certainly has a wide um, variety of targets already named <clears throat> and pinpointed that I think a lot are worth a lot um, a lot of them would be worth follow up, um, you know getting on you know boots on the ground stuff mapping prospecting soil sampling if it if a certain you know if we can justify it you know maybe geophysics in certain areas too you know to build these targets up. <clears throat> obviously cliff miles you know we, we i've spun it around it has a lot of, it has great potential but you know the <laughs> actually i'm gonna turn that back on you know the, there's the property boundary it's huge we got a huge property and i, I mean we got targets just throughout yeah. the whole thing and and <laughs> it's going to be a race about uh getting out there and and hitting on these targets as well as you know coming back to the core shack and logging core um right so yeah i know in the in the past <clears throat> news release uh and i kind of recommend the listeners go back to the old news releases and some of the, the older interviews that we've done, but there are very exciting targets all around the entire trend going 12 kilometers, I believe. So, I mean, priority one, obviously cliff, and then uh, we'll have to assess, you know, the, the other targets as the season goes on, because there is a lot of targets and only so much time, but um, I, I think there's definitely a, a good, I, I see really good targets to start off here really blow up the system in terms of grade depth potential and, and scale. And really, if you're looking at um, the, the saddle north deposit here, which I think sold for more than 300 million, you know, we're, this is the scale, right? So you could fit 455 million. Thank you. That's yeah. So, you know, you could fit a lot of those 455 million deposits within this plan section. And this is only for cliff, uh, uh, the cliff system and there's uh, that whole 12 kilometer trend where you guys are seeing with the ZTEM, um, all those, yeah, exactly. All of these other targets that uh, will maybe do some initial ground truthing this year and see if they're worthy of drilling. And yeah. uh, so that, that's, that's great to hear. Right. So, yeah. You know what, Andrew, it all takes time and money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely need that money to, to get going, but um, you know, it's, it is really exciting. I see a really clear plan, um, you know, to, to go at these, you guys have the right targets to go after. We'll look for the, your next news release um, for, you know, the next steps. And hopefully we, we hear back um, on the other updates. So, you know, you've, you've got already gone through when you'll be on the field, some of the targets and the priorities 
uh, really, I have nothing, you know, no more else to add. So I think, um, Fiore, did you have anything else you wanted to uh, add? No, to? I was just, I was just uh, uh, curious if you had uh, wanted to ask any of your the investor questions, or you're you're satisfied that Nicholas has covered most things. Uh, mm. I, I know there was some other questions that were coming up, or yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, the questions that were asked, that you know, one of them was uh, regarding the scale, and I think we already touched upon that. I was just doing the napkin math. You know, if this is two and a half kilometers long, it's a couple of hundred meters wide. It's 600 meters deep. I guess so one far. question. Yeah, so far. <laughs> one of the questions was, you know, the, the Adam fault, how, how far down do we think it goes? Is it, we know it's curved kind of near the, the top end and near the south end, it looks more vertical. That's kind of yeah. our control for mineralization at the moment, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the controls. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, in the in the south end, it's it's pretty hard to say. I mean, with any sort of definitive answer, um, you know, the, the the best guess you could come up with would be taking one of these geometries from block two, three. Maybe I'll turn that a little bit so you can see it better. Block two, three, or the miles block. Taking one of these um, atom fault panels in blue and sort of placing it on, you know, placing it on top of a. Uh, the block one zone and, and trying to see how far down you can reasonably fit the curvature. But really it's, it's uh, you, we wouldn't be able to say with any sort of certainty until yeah. we actually drill it. Um, okay. Hey, yeah, um, hopefully it so, goes a long way down. So one question here, and I'm not sure if you know this, but I think GT Saddle North had a, a mineralization density of uh, the, the rock density was 2.8 tons per cubic meter. Is that something you would estimate that, you know, Cliff or, or Miles, you know, for those that are doing napkin math? Mm -hmm. um, so we started our SG program uh, when I came on board last summer uh, and we got it started maybe midway through the summer. So I think we started on whole, the end of hole 40. Uh, so we've only done, we've only sampled just a few holes, you know, 40, 41, okay. 42, 3, 4, 5. But the numbers are pretty variable. Like it's not it's not trending to a nice sort of distribution as of yet. We don't have enough sampling, um, so that number is almost certainly going to change uh, before the end. And that's really just this volume here. So we haven't really started measuring these yet. And that, that'd be one of the goals of going up, sort of before drilling. You know, give us a little bit of time before drilling is to do some relogging and, and take some SG measurements to to really flesh out the whole system, or the whole system's okay. value. Got it. Well, yeah, thank you, Nick and, and Fiore again for taking the time to take a chat with me. And I'm sure, you know, the next news release, definitely want to do another deep dive and kind of go through the targets and uh, really excited to, to get through, you know, we're almost at summertime. So it sounds like mid-July, it's right around the corner. I think everybody's going to be really excited and uh, uh, for what's to come from Metallus, it sounds like you guys are going to hit it out of the ballpark, in my opinion, Hopefully, anyways, yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Finger, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. That's the goal. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.